general rule, when I see kids, I got to wire them up with, with sugar. It's one of those promises I make to people. As you know, uh, I am not Pastor Nick, and just to clarify, I am not Grizzly Adams or Santa Claus either. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Tom. Uh, a while back, Pastor Nick asked if I would help out and give a message over the Christmas. Now, originally it was going to be because he was going out of town, and then he sent a message that said, hey, I'm going to change the dates, I'm going to change the dates, back and forth as he kind of nailed things down. And he finally came down and said, okay, well, this is the day you're going to give the message. And I'm like, okay, I got it. And always, because it's Advent, I send a note back to him and I said, okay, what are the applicable verses for that day? And rather than send me one, he always sent me a list of four or five different verses that would fit. And when we nailed it down to the 20th, I said, oh, here's the verse I like. So we'll be getting to that in a bit. But first, the beard. Now, a lot of you have watched as this beard has come in over the past, uh, well, it's been a couple of months now, uh, and a lot of you have seen the beard, not all of you know why the beard is there. Uh, a couple of months ago, my wife pointed out that we were having a problem in our kitchen. Uh, the going to our dishwasher had started to become an uphill slope. You could no longer just walk to the, the dishwasher. You had to go uphill to get there. And we realized it was because the floor had gotten damaged and I had to tear all of the cabinets out and replace the subflooring. And that means replacing all of the cabinets and replacing everything else. And it didn't go as well as I wanted to the first weekend that I took off in order to do the work. So when I didn't get all of the work done that I wanted to, I told my wife, that's it, I am not shaving until you have a kitchen sink back in the kitchen. <laughs> Sometimes you make promises and you don't quite think of what it's going to mean. So when you, as you see the beard get longer, just know that my wife doesn't have a kitchen sink. And when you come to church and you see me clean shaven as I should be, uh, you'll know Alicia can finally wash dishes in the bathroom or in the, in the sink again instead of in the bathroom where we've been doing it for some time. Um, I made that promise. It wasn't, my wife points out, it's self-inflicted. It was not a promise that I made that, that I had to keep necessarily. I could have just shaved when I said, wow, this is going to take forever. I'm shaving. But I said, no, I, I made a vow. I decided that I was not going to shave until I did that. So I said, okay, I'm going to hold up to that. And it got me thinking, as Pastor, when Pastor Nick had sent the list of verses, I thought it really fitting that there was one that talked about promises. And that was where kind of I got to the title of today, this, the idea of prophets and promises, because we read about that in the, the readings for today. I wanted to think about promises that we make. Right? Sometimes, you know, I promise the kids, hey, you get to the end of the message, there will be something to make it worthwhile. Um, it's an easy bet that kids like things like candy, so it's really easy to follow through. Kids have short attention spans, so it's easy to say, oh, oh the message, is, we're, we're done, here's the, here's the reward right now. As we get older, we tend to make some promises that maybe you go further out. They take a lot longer to fulfill. And obviously, as, as I look around, one of the uh, promises that we make that we think about is wedding vows. Uh, if I were to ask, you know, I'm about to hit 20 years of marriage. And, and I look at that and think, wow, that is a long time. You know, when I first got married, I would have never thought about this idea. You know, you say you're going to love, honor, and cherish the person that you're marrying. And it's not until next week. It's not until next month. It's until death do us part. It's a long time if you think about it. Now, I've been married for 20 years, and if I, I bet if I ask how many people could say they've been married more than twice that. Got, got some hands. Uh, not, not just a couple of hands, a lot of hands of people who have been married more than twice as long as I have. Now, how about three times? Is anyone getting near 60 yet? Okay. We, we, they don't want to tell us that they're getting that old. But that's, you know... When we make those promises in marriage, that's a long-term commitment. Now, another one that we jump into sometimes, maybe people don't think about it the same way, is a mortgage contract, right? 
The bank promises to give you money so you can buy a house, and you promise to give it back at some point with a little bit extra, right? But it's a promise. Or you think about employers and employees. They promise to do work and to provide benefits and that. These are all promises that we make to each other. But even when you think about marriage, which is, can be one of those longest term commitments that we get, get into, one of the biggest promises that we make, it's still a relatively short term promise when you compare it to what we're talking about as we approach Christmas, which is the promise that was given by the prophets long before Jesus ever arose, arose, arrived, got here. Sometimes my wording. So, being young and, and high tech, I'm going to be looking at Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45, and then we're going to read a couple of others. If you're using the Gold Pew Bibles, it's on page 77 and 78. Uh, I'm reading out of the NIV because I liked the wording a little bit better than the Gold Pew Bibles. So I know Pastor Nick always uses those. I'm going to step away a little bit and use uh, the NIV version. So Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When, Elizabeth. when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, my baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And I think the key verse as we look at this is verse 45, where it says, Blessed is she who has believed the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And we have to think about what these promises are. And we'll look at that. And because at, when Pastor Nick sent those verses out and I read that verse, that was the one that jumped out into my head. And at that time, trust me, I had no concept of carrying this beard all the way to today. I wasn't going to talk about it in, and specifically. Um, but I think there's one more verse that we should read in conjunction with that, and that's verse 50. If you look at the promises that Mary was looking at, and then in verse 50, in her response, Mary says... His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. And then it finally in verse 55, we read, To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised to our ancestors. So Mary received this visit. Mary received this promise that you're going to carry the Son of God. You're going to carry uh, this Jesus, you'll be called Emmanuel, and he's going to be, which literally means God is with us. Now, this wasn't a promise that was made to Mary nine months before the birth of Jesus. This was a promise that was made to all of Israel 400 years before Jesus was even conceived. It's a hard word to say that way because when we think of that, you know, it doesn't come. It doesn't hold the same meaning when we think about the birth of Jesus. But Pastor Nick talks in his messages, right? He talks about that 400 years of silence, and then Jesus, right? Well, that 400 years of silence was the time between the last of the prophets and the and the birth of Jesus, and the prophets had told us the promise of Jesus coming. Now, Pastor Nick has done quite a lot talking about, you know, trying to put it into perspective. What does that mean? If I think he used eight, right? If we look at just eight of the prophecies that were made about Jesus, the, the odds of all of them coming true were like burying the state of Texas in, in silver dollars uh, and trying to pick one coin out. That gives you an idea. And, and that, those weren't the only prophecies, right? Those weren't the only promises. 
So we have these promises 400 years ahead of time that Jesus is coming. That's a long-term promise. You know, that's not a promise that's fulfilled in the short term. So the promise of Jesus and the promise of what he brings was a long time in coming. But Mary, in her response to Elizabeth, identifies just how big a promise this is because Mary points out, this doesn't just apply to me. This isn't just a promise for me. It's a promise for all generations to come. 33, 34 years later, we would learn just how significant that promise is when Jesus went to the cross. And for those of you who have ever heard me talk, you know, talk around Christmas, I have a hard time separating the birth of Christ with the, from the death of Christ. To me, they're so inextricably linked that you have to talk about both of them at the same time because the promise of the birth of Christ leads to the promise of the death of Christ. And that goes back again. I, I, I said I could have named this, uh, the you know, this is your life of Pastor Nick messages because I tried to think back to some of the things he's been saying. And, and if you think about the image he shows of the crosses, right, you, you, as you learn more about your relationship to Christ, you learn to rely more upon Christ and you get the bigger, bigger bridge of the cross. The promise of Christ came in his birth, but was fulfilled at his death. So we want to think about that as we come into the Christmas season. My beard, you know, the idea of growing this beard was a snap promise. It was just, hey, I'll do it, right? Marriages aren't really snap decisions, usually, not, hopefully. Yeah, there are a few, but, you know, a marriage is something that, that takes some time. We work our way into them. We get to know somebody. But even in the concept of four, when you look at 400 years, a marriage that's going to last 40, 50 years still can be looked at as sort of a snap promise. It's just a snap decision. The coming of Jesus was no snap decision. It was told and foretold time and again through, you know, in the Bible. We read about it. The odds, the likelihood that Jesus would come and fulfill all of those prophecies is inconceivable. It's incomprehensible. You can't. You just can't put the odds to it. So that helps us to understand that what we read in the Bible is real. It is the Word of God, and it is the promise of God, and it's fulfilled first in the birth and then in the death of Christ. So as we come into the Christmas season, we have to think about that. I have a note to myself to talk about help in fulfilling. Um, Getting to where I'm at, to where I can shave this beard off, is going to take a little bit of help. It took Benjamin learning a little bit about uh, carpentry and, and home construction. Uh, when I fractured my arm, I realized I was going to need help installing the countertops. So we've got someone who's going to come in and take care of that for us. Uh, I'm not going to get to the end of this project without some help and assistance uh, from both inside and outside the family. This had people who joined him in his path. Now, certainly he was helping them, but they were also there and helping him. And he handed on his commission to them uh, after he had died. He said, this is what I need you to do now. You're going to carry this cross forward. And we're no different. Uh, as we go through our journey, we walk with Christ. We think about Pastor Nick says our mission every, every Sunday when he gets up here. We're disciples who treasure Christ who seek to make disciples who treasure Christ. We need help in doing that as well. Pastor Nick needs help. He can't do that by himself. Any of us sitting here who think, well, it, it's Pastor Nick's mission. That's his job. That's what he does. If that's our belief, we've, uh, you know, one, we're making Pastor Nick's job much harder, and we've deceived ourselves. But we also, we need Pastor Nick's help. We need the help of each other. Again, I said it's sort of a who's who of Pastor Nick messages. Pastor Nick has this real strong belief in looking at what Jesus did and, and using small groups. Uh, he's talked about the need for, you know, these small groups. A, a group of 50 is great, 60 people, but it's hard to build those relationships that allow you to say, you know, these are the things I've done. These are the things I need to do. Uh, Mary, in her response to Elizabeth, talks about 
fear, those who fear God, right? And, and we miss that. We hear that promise, oh, it's going to come for generations. It's there for all people. We sometimes forget the other half of that promise is that there's action on our part. It's easy to think about the promise that, that God made that was fulfilled in Jesus, and it's difficult sometimes to remember that we are involved in that. We're a part of it. So we need help in doing that as well. That's where those small groups that Pastor Nick talks about, which is really just biblical. It's not, it's not Pastor Nick, he, it's a great idea. I think he would tell you it's not Pastor Nick's idea. It's the way that Jesus led. And that's something that we should think about. We need help in fulfilling the mission and doing things that we need to do to move the mission of the church forward, to help Pastor Nick, to help the rest of the congregation, and to help the church as a whole. So as we come, you know, and, and I, I mentioned the, I think they got rid of it, or is it still somewhere? It's, it, it's hiding. Oh, it goes up Christmas Eve. So I, I've, I always see it and I think about it. But uh, the promise of the empty uh, manger, which is awaiting the promise of Jesus, that gets fulfilled. We know that happens through Christmas. But as we approach it, you know, I want us to think about the, the joy of Jesus being born, but I also want us to think about the joy that his life opportun represents and the joy that his death and resurrection represents. It's a promise that God made to us. It's a promise that God will keep. It's a promise that we're active in fulfilling. I would ask that you just bow your heads as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, any time that I stand up here, I have to remember that the only thing I can do is try and share your word as it's written. It's really difficult sometimes to keep focus on you and to keep focus on what your will is in our lives. And it's easy to think more about us and ourselves. Uh, we've seen videos that, that remind us that it's not about us, it's about Jesus. It's not about us being the center of attention, it's about Jesus being the center of his story, your story. And I would ask that you be with this church and help us to focus more on why the church is here, more about why we're here as a part of the church, and how we can lead lives that are more Christ-like. We know we can never achieve that goal of being like Christ, but we can certainly try. So I ask that you be with me as a, a clear example of someone who has shortcomings but with every member of this church, as we look at the promises that you've made and at how great a price you paid to fulfill those promises, we ask that you help us to keep Jesus as the true focus, not only of the days approaching Christmas, but of the entire year, because Jesus doesn't stop being the center of the story just because we take the Christmas tree and the Christmas lights down. Be with us now as we go about the rest of our day and help us to apply this message uh, to our hearts and to our lives. In your name we pray, amen.